Welcome! Summer is on its way, and for a lot of people, it has already started, specifically the box office. So I'm going to introduce to you something today called the Summer Movie Wager. Now, this is a game that is played on the podcast, the Slash Film Cast. I would highly recommend, if you are interested in movies or film at all, to go listen to that podcast. But They play us every summer, and essentially the goal of it is to predict the top 10 grossing movies of the summer. So the way that the points work for this game, if you guess number 1 or 10 correctly, you get 13 points each each that is the most points you can get you get 10 points for every two through nine that's dead on so okay number three i say is this movie it turns out to be this movie i get 10 points for that pick seven points if my pick was one spot away from where it ended up five points if it's two spots away three points if my pick is anywhere in the top 10 and one point for every dark horse so what a dark horse is after the fact i make my top 10 list i get three dark horses Every dark horse that does make it, I just get a point. So it's not as much as if I would have put that movie on my top 10, but it's still something. So I have a little a little cushion there if there were movies I wasn't sure about. So what I am going to do today is let you know my predictions for the top 10 grossing movies of the summer. Uh, a couple ground rules you should be aware of. This is domestic box office only, so no global just what happens here in the states for a movie to apply to this competition it must have been released by friday april 26th and it can go no longer than labor day weekend let's just jump right into my list as you can see avengers endgame is my prediction for the number one movie and i am very confident that this is going to be the number one movie as you probably already know it has broken so many records being the number one domestic opening and i know global doesn't count but it was also the number one global opening so i have no doubt that this is probably going to make upper 600 million at least probably seven or eight though the way it's tracking right now so the real competition comes from these next movies here so in second place i have the lion king now this was a toss-up between lion king and toy story 4 for me i think the lion king is going to do a little bit better several reasons um i'll get more into toy story 4 when i get there but the lion king is going to be a huge hit quality wise we'll have to wait and see but there's no doubt it's going to make a lot of money at the box office i think one of the best movies to compare this to is going to be disney's live action version of beating the beast which when it was released it grossed over 500 million dollars domestically and i know not all of disney's live action movies have been as successful um i'll get into another live action one i don't think will be as successful later on but i do think that lion king has a good chance of making at least 400 million maybe even like 500 million dollars domestically the trailer itself set records on youtube for being one of the most watched trailers uh not even there i think also on twitter as well and this is a franchise that has dominated Disney culture, but also just worldwide culture where everyone is familiar with this franchise. That being said, I don't think Toy Story 4 is going to be far behind it. Now, if you look at some of these numbers for the Toy Story franchise, they have definitely been successful. Uh, Toy Story just made barely under 200 million. Toy Story 2 easily made nearly two and a half million. Toy Story 3 in 2010 made over 400 million dollars. So for most summers, this would guarantee it a spot at number one. However, I, I'm not confident it's going to perform those numbers this summer based on some other competition it has. And again, I no movie's going to make that much with Avengers Endgame coming out in the same summer. It's true, yes, that Pixar sequels tend to do really well. We've seen this with Finding Dory, The Incredibles 2. However, you look at the other side and you have the Cars franchise, you have Monsters University, where they did not do as well as the box office. And I'm not suggesting that Toy Story 4 is going to fall in the same category that those movies did. I think it is probably safe to say it's going to make more numbers like the Incredibles and Finding Nemo sequels did. But nevertheless, I I do think it's going to be a little short from Lion King and Endgame, and I don't know if it's going to make as much money as Toy Story 3 did. Alright, this is the part of the list where it gets a little trickier because there's not as obvious front runners, but I think number four is going to go to Spider-Man Far From Home. So Spider-Man Homecoming only made about $330 million, and I say only $330 because again, That's a lot of money for a movie to make, but typically with a lot of Marvel movies, we've seen the sequels do a little bit better at times. That was the case with Guardians of the Galaxy and Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. Same thing with Ant-Man and Ant-Man and the Wasp. So based on just some of those numbers, and I think when Spider-Man Homecoming came out, people were still not the biggest fan of Spider-Man just because of the unsuccessful movies that we've already seen. But this Spider-Man is a version that I think a lot of people are getting behind, and so the sequel I do think is going to do a little bit better. Now, again, I don't think it's going to do Toy Story 4 or Lion King numbers, but I do think it can make mid-upper 300 million. Alright, Detective Pikachu. 
This is a wild card movie because there's really nothing we can compare it to. You could talk about other anime Pokemon movies that we've seen hit theaters, but those really don't do good at the box office, at least domestically. And the other example you could try to use is like other video game movies, but again, those aren't the best example because those don't do well critically or at the box office. But based on the hype that seems to be going around this movie, I do think it's going to come in about fifth place. I can see it making about 300 million dollars and i wouldn't be surprised if it even made more depending on how successful it is the thing i'm really noticing though is how early it's released with it being released may 10th you have a lot of the summer left that it can make money now if we're talking globally there's no doubt that this would clear maybe even a billion dollars because internationally they love the pokemon franchise now domestically we love it here too but I don't know if it's gonna make quite those numbers. Fifth place is honestly kind of a safe bet, and I'm gonna leave it there. Number six, The Secret Life of Pets 2. Okay, Secret Life of Pets, why the heck am I adding this on this list? And here's why. It's gonna make some money. Now, I have never seen this movie, I have no interest in seeing this movie, and you can bet I don't think I'm gonna see the sequel. But nevertheless, it made $368 million domestically in 2016. Like, that's absolutely crazy that an anime movie would do that that isn't connected to another franchise or isn't Disney-owned. And so with this one, I'm not as confident it's gonna make that same money again. I'm guessing this one's probably going to do a little lower than that, but we don't have a lot of animated movies other than, you know, Toy Story, and I guess you could count the Disney remakes as, you know, children family movies. But this is one of the few anime movies that I, I think it's going to make at least some of its money back like it did the first one. I would have to guess upper 200 million or so. Number seven goes to Aladdin. Now this one is tricky because I should really be using the same argument for this I did The Lion King. However, the backlash that the trailers have received for this movie have not been the most positive, so I don't think it's going to make that much money. Now, I think it's going to make a lot of money, but just not nearly as much as Lion King, Toy Story 4, you get the point. Which, it's tricky to gauge this, because again, if I'm using the same point, like Beauty and the Beast, live action, you know, this is all the same era of Disney. This is pulling from the Renaissance period, taking it live action. But I just, I'm not confident that this is going to make the same amount of money. Now, it comes out early enough that if this is a good movie and gets a good enough critic score and people are talking about it, that it could make a lot of money. But I think the safe bet is to say it's going to make mid $200 million. Number eight, Godzilla 2 or Godzilla King of Monsters, really. Now, this is kind of tricky to gauge because there are a lot of Godzilla movies out there. So I'm going to be looking specifically to the one that is connected to this franchise, which is the 2014 movie Godzilla. Now, it made about $200 million at the box office, so that's... That's about where it sits on my list right now. But the other movie that is in the same universe as this movie is Kong Skull Island, and that only made $168 million at the box office. So from my understanding, this is supposed to open up a whole new universe, where in a few years we're going to see Godzilla and King Kong fight each other, which should be pretty epic. But this one is, it's hard to gauge exactly how much money it's going to make. The trailers have looked really well done, and they're getting a lot of positive feedback. And also, the cast is incredible in this movie if you haven't seen it yet. So I do think it has the possibility to make more than the last Godzilla movie. And so I think it's also going to make probably lower 200 million, maybe 230, 240. Number nine, I am choosing Hobbs and Shaw. So Hobbs and Shaw is another movie that's kind of hard to estimate because while it is part of the Fast and Furious franchise, it's a spinoff and it's not directly related. So if we're looking at other Fast and Furious movies, wow, this is hard to search because some of them aren't even called Fast and Furious. Fast Five made 209 million. Fast Furious Six made 238 million. Furious Seven made 353 million, which is the most that any movie in that franchise has made. And then Fate of the Furious went down to 226 million. So I guess the biggest question is, if this movie can make that much money without Vin Diesel. The problem is, though, it does come out August 2nd, so it only has a month to make the money where movies like Aladdin, Detective Pikachu, they have, like, three months to make that money. So the money I do think I can make before Labor Day is probably 180, 190. All right, number 10, 
Men in Black International. So the Men in Black franchise is one that we haven't seen in a few years now, and this is going to be tricky because it's another, in a way, spin-off of the original franchise. So if we're looking at their previous success, Men in Black did pretty well, 250 million, Men in Black 2, 190, and MIB 3 did 179. So this movie has potential to make upper $100 million or so. Now it does come out mid-June, so it has time to make them money, but the biggest question is, are people going to want to see this? Chris Hemsworth and Tessa Thompson are very popular right now, so I think that people are going to want to go to the box office to see them. But this movie is really going to tell us if people even are still interested in this franchise at all. So we'll see. I think 10th Place is a good, safe bet for it. I can see it completely flopping, but I don't think it's going to do much better than 10th. All right, I got my three wild horses here. Um, again, a wild horse is any movie that I think has the possibility of making anywhere in the top 10. Rocket Man, the biopic by Elton John, I think it's got a chance. The thing that really sold me was the early release, giving it most of the summer to make a lot of money. And I think it's a very unique movie where there's not any other movie on my top 10 list that's like this. So I think if people are going for more of that type of vibe and tone for a movie, maybe they'll go out and see it. And the best comparison I have for it is Bohemian Rhapsody. I mean... $216 million domestically is crazy for a biopic. Now, the question is, do people like Elton John as much as Queen? Or maybe not even like, but are Elton John's songs as embedded in culture as much as Queen's? And I would say no. At the same time, this is the best comparison we have to the possibility of how much money this can make. So if it happens, I won't be totally surprised. Next, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. It's really hard to gauge how well this movie's going to do. The only thing I can kind of compare it to is uh, Quentin Tarantino's previous films. Hateful Eight, Not Great, Django Unchained. Um, it's not bad. So we can kind of see like he doesn't make a lot of money, but the hype around this movie, I think, is a little bit higher than his previous films were. I mean, you got Leo, you got Brad Pitt, you got Margot Robbie. You have the cast that can perform this. And I believe I saw the budget was a almost like a hundred million dollars so that tells you that sony at least thinks that it has the chance to make that money back i would hope if they're going to invest all that money but i don't know i wouldn't be surprised if it makes you know 150 160 million uh depending on how good it is again it's a rare movie that not a lot of other movies this summer look like it so it could do pretty well the last one is dark phoenix and i don't know a lot of people that are excited about this movie so i'm not confident enough to put it in my top 10. the x-men franchise is one that has typically made a lot of money in the past uh the last movie did not do so hot though at the box office and critically days of future past uh made 233 million dollars the next one apocalypse dropped almost 100 million dollars so 155 is still a really good number that any movie would be glad to see at the box office uh but it's a pretty large drop and the question is are people more excited to see dark phoenix than they were apocalypse and I don't think they are. The cast of this movie are practically begging to be killed off because they don't want to work in this franchise anymore. And I think with Disney buying Fox out and hinting heavily that they're going to rebrand and reboot the X-Men franchise, I just don't think a lot of people are excited for this movie. So if it makes, you know, upper 100 million or so, it can make the top 10, but I, I'm not confident it's going to make that money. So that's my summer movie wager predictions. Uh, let me know what you think. Uh, write down your top 10 in the comments below. Uh, what do you think is going to be the biggest box office success this summer? What do you think the biggest surprise is? What movie do you think is going to absolutely flop? Comment below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And I will see you next time. I will keep you updated on how this list is going.